We've learned in this chapter that heat will always flow from a warmer object to a cooler object when they are in contact with one another. So we have drawn a red arrow to show that heat will be transferred from the warmer iron to the cooler water. And we know from conservation of energy, in this case thermal energy, that the amount of heat that is lost by the iron will equal the amount of heat that is gained by the water. We've also learned in this chapter that when an object changes temperature because of this loss or gain of heat, that amount of heat is equal to the mass of the object multiplied by the specific heat capacity multiplied by a temperature change. Now a temperature change would be a final temperature minus an initial temperature. So for each of these Q expressions that we've put into our little equation, we're going to substitute in an MC times a change in temperature. So for example, for the iron, we would have the mass of the iron multiplied by the specific heat capacity of the iron and then multiplied by the final temperature minus the initial temperature. And then the same idea will take place on the right hand side. We have the mass of the water multiplied by the specific heat capacity of the water and then multiplied by the final temperature of the water minus the initial temperature of the water. Another thing to keep in mind is that because these objects are in contact with one another, whatever the final temperature of the iron is will be the same as the final temperature of the water. That's actually what we're looking for, of course, in this problem. Where we have to be a little bit careful, however, is to understand the following. We know that the iron is going to be losing heat, as indicated by that red arrow, and that the water will be gaining heat. And what that means is that this quantity on the right-hand side, which represents the amount of heat that the water is gaining, is going to be a positive quantity, because the final temperature for the water is going to be greater than the initial temperature of the water, right? Because it's gaining heat. So that means that this quantity, again, on the right side will be positive. For the iron, on the other hand, it's cooling down because it's losing heat. That means the final temperature of the iron will actually be less than the initial temperature, which means that this quantity will end up being negative. We cannot set a negative quantity on the left side equal to a positive quantity on the right side. That wouldn't make much sense. So what we have to do in order to establish a mathematically sound equation is to actually negate one side of the equation. So, and again, we do this because right now we have a negative quantity equaling a positive quantity. So perhaps the simplest thing to do here would be to place a negative sign on the left side of the equation because then you'll have a double negative which renders the left side positive. So it's important to keep that in mind. Basically what we're saying is that negative heat lost is equal to positive heat gained. That's another way of thinking about the equation that we've set up. So we can now begin to plug in some known values. If we go back up, we know the masses of the iron and of the water. We know the initial temperatures and we can look up the specific heat capacities. So we'll go ahead and start plugging in some numbers. So we've gone ahead and have plugged in the known values. The specific heat capacities for the iron and for water were looked up in a reference table that's probably located somewhere in this chapter of your textbook. Next, we'll do some algebra. So we're going to multiply negative 1.5 times 448. And when you do that, you're going to get negative 672. This is multiplied by the final temperature minus the 600. And for clarity, we'll drop units temporarily. Then you're going to multiply the 20 by the 4186, and you'll get 83,720. And then what we have to do is distribute here. So we're going to multiply the negative 672 into the parentheses. This gives us negative 672 times the final temperature, and then negative 672 times negative 600 is 403,200. Similarly, we'll distribute the 83,720. So we'll have 83,720 times the final temperature minus an 83,720 times 25 is 209, 3,000. And the rest is pretty easy algebra here. Why don't we add the 672 TF to both sides? And simultaneously, we'll add the 209, 3,000 to both sides. So the left-hand side will become a rather large number. It's going to be 2496. I'll just write it out here. 2496200. 
And then the right hand side, if we add the 83, 720 plus the 672, we're going to get 84392. Final temperature. And then simply divide both sides of the equation by the 84392. And when you do this, you will get the final temperature value of 29.6 degrees Celsius. So this will be the final temperature of this system of iron in contact with water.